Because you don't know it, dude. Yeah, you don't yeah. know it. You don't. I'm I'm putting putting on the spot. It's an argument. argument. It's an argument. No, the argument. He's not giving an argument. He's giving an opinion. I'll give you two. All right. You want to hear the argument? argument? You know? You don't. Dude. You don't. God exists. Okay, no, so let's, let's, you, I think that what's your, let's, let me ask you a question. What's your name, by the way? Casey, I'm, I'm Kerrigan. Good to meet you, Casey. Okay, Casey, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in morality? No. You don't? No. So anything goes in your universe? Right. Do you believe in science? Yeah. Why? Okay, Casey, what's, what's the foundation of science? Scientific method. Okay, now I'm not talking about testing, observing, reproducing. Experience. What's, but what's the foundation? Experience, observation, well, using your senses. Right. How much of this but now, but now Casey, hold on a second. Yourself. Now, Casey, now you're assuming once again you're that up. your five senses are reliable. Right. Now, they're not. I know they are. So then why are you engaging in science? Because uh, what else can I do to rationally well, explain my reality? So what, that, what other method am I going to use? Well, that's the point. If you're going to things like ghosts and angels well, here's, and, and, and this thing, Casey. You're, you're using science, you're engaging in science, using your five senses, and the only proper precondition or foundation for believing your five senses are reliable is in the beginning of the Christian God. So by engaging in science, you're presupposing, my God, you're stealing okay. from my worldview. What I'm trying to get at is, you need the existence of God and ethics in God. I don't need the existence of God and ethics in my life. Can't see it, can't taste it. Can't touch it. No, you can can't smell it. it. Hey, you can no, experience no, it for no, sure. No, 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 you no, can experience no, no. We're talking about, We're talking about your five senses here. All right, no, morality is a concept in your brain. You can't touch no. concepts. I can experience a good action. What are you joking? Well, you're, you're are you begging for the question, Casey? You're begging the question. You're very insane. You're saying that I can't have a moral understanding through experience. I You said, you said, listen to what you said, Casey. I can experience a good action because I say it's good. You just beg the question. You said it's good, you said I experienced it. That's now prove it's thing. good. Uh, who stand, by whose standard, Casey? Yeah. All right, all right, well this so, is it. So so me, okay, okay, okay. I think murder's wrong, he thinks murder's wrong, he thinks murder's wrong, he thinks murder's wrong, murder's wrong, murder's wrong, murder's wrong. We all don't want to murder. Wait okay, a minute, it's just, a, it's just an experience. No, wait a minute, Listen, Casey. listen, no. Stop hey, quit interrupting, you jackass! You're interrupting me, let's talk. Okay, all right, listen, listen. I don't need to murder respect. anybody to know that I don't want to murder them. Okay, that's an ethical choice. She feels the same, he feels the same, that's the same. We all have that same experience. It's just an experience, yes. It is not all things legitimate. If you have a shared experience of what an ethical action is, that's all we got. It's no ultimate standard. It's no divine moral inspiration. You say no, you're just not understanding what I'm saying. Wrong, but you haven't proven it is wrong, Casey. So you haven't had an ethical experience. For all you know, if we live in the atheistic universe where there's no God, yeah. murder's okay. I mean, we're just higher forms of animals, right? Hey, oh, a frog! I'm the most powerful. Are you a meat eater, Casey? Are you a meat eater, Casey? A meat eater? Well, then you're a murderer! You're murdering your ancestors! Listen, I'm murdering those who came from the same person you came from. I know. There's 
between human murder. nature and dog nature and tree nature and cat nature. Why are they allowed to treat an animal like them? What? They're just an animal. You're just an animal like them, right? I agree. So then why why are you killing Why are you murdering them? Because they're For my own good. Oh, we're smarter. Because my ethics are subjective. Yeah. I don't give a shit. If I want to eat from them, I'm going to fucking eat it. <laughs> that makes sense. Good yeah, argument. Atheist it's world is fine. I, I can make ethical choices still. Anything goes in the X and Y. That means I can do whatever I want. That means I can be nice to someone if I want. That means I can be mean to someone if I want. You ain't going nice and mean here. Oh, yeah, I don't. All I have is my experience. All I have is my experience. What nice means, what good means. That's all I got. I definitely don't have a blind inspiration of who he is. And you say something is right, that's all I got. And you say something is wrong. That means you're having a stain in your middle. And you're like, you say something is right, something is wrong. That means you have a stain in the middle. There is no open standard of what is right or wrong. No, no open standard of right or wrong. God. If you come upon a rapist who's raping someone, right. you can't say you're wrong for doing that. Right, I can't. I, 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 I feel can't. like you're wrong. I feel, I feel I exactly but I don't really think you're wrong. Uh, that's exactly what yeah, I feel. So that's what the atheist wrong with. It's the same thing. I, I, I don't remember when I said, uh, I think it would be attractive to the girls for the rest of my life. Same thing for a gay guy. But I don't remember when he's just like, oh, I guess I'll be attracted to God. Or a rapist says, oh, I guess I want to rape young children. You have no idea what reality really is. You have no idea what reality really is if you're an atheist. Then explain you can't it. engage in science. You yeah. can't know what morality yeah. is. Uh, yeah. Logic itself. Uh. We're engaging in a logical conversation right here. Oh, yeah. He's using <laughs> logic. He's not wearing a mask. He's using logic <laughs> to engage in our conversation here, and yet he can't even have the foundation and the right preconditions for logic itself. I don't know. Is that the law of non-contradiction? The law of non-contradiction. The law of non-contradiction. You don't need foundation. You sure do. But wait a minute. No, no, no. Who said? Who says who is axiomatic? You use logic to prove logic? That's called begging the question. Symbolic and predicate logic has been axiomated. No, no, no. See, you just begged the question. I did not. You have misunderstood. You just used Mr. Logic has been exhumated as a system. How do you know logic does, exists? That does, what? Explain the problem. I don't. What, let's, let's I don't know how God exists. What, I didn't say God said logic. Just, you asked how do I know God exists? Logic. How do you know logic exists? Logic. So you're trying to explain that God exists. God exists. I didn't say God. God. I said logic. logic. Yes, you did. Okay. How do you know logic exists? I can do it I right in front of you. That's begging the question. Induction. You say I'll engage in logic. I prove it exists. But you're begging the question. No, no, no. Listen, I'll answer it for him. How do I know logic exists? Deductive arguments and inductive arguments. Begging the question once again. No. What? Yes. Misunderstanding. This is one law. No, no. The law of non-contradiction. You give two answers to the same question. They can't both be right. That's the law of non-contradiction. Yeah. Now, 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 hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. I know the law of non-contradiction, can you see it, can you touch it, can you taste it, it's an immaterial thing, yet it's universal, it's abstract, and it's a law. That a law of non-contradiction can't be questioned. You sense force. Can't be questioned. You sense force. I'm not dumb, I'm going to have to say that much time. So, so in an atheist who wrong you, and everything's material, yep. the law of logic does not even exist yeah. in the atheist universe. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. No, it does not. Yeah, because I have a brain, I, I feel what's good, I feel what's wrong. And that's so, all I got. So logic is part of your brain? Logic is just part of your brain. Is that all it is? Logic is yes, a is. method at which I. So we can we can take logic out of your brain. Well, you didn't, uh, you didn't Let's take it and put it under a microscope and examine logic. No, logic's a concept. It's abstract. It's immaterial. Yet it's universal. It's a law. It can't be questioned. The second you question the law of non-contradiction, you're contradicting yourself. You're begging the question once again. Okay. So explain the problem of evil. Well, and well, in the atheist universe, there is no problem with it because there's no thing as evil. In my universe, there's no problem with evil because we have free will. But in the atheist universe, wait, you have free will, and you're and in your God, who's supposed to be all loving, all knowing, and all powerful? Free will? How's that possible? How's that possible? Hey, Mr. Atheist. Wait, you're calling me Mr. Atheist? How do you know I don't believe in God? Well, you've already told me you don't believe in God. Unless you're a liar. Well, then you're a liar. No, I'm a liar. Okay, go to my world. Okay, Casey. Okay, so. You've already conceded the point that if you're an atheist, absolute morality does not exist. So in your, 
And your universe, and your universe, there is no such thing as the problem of evil. Whenever no, it's God. But if you believe in God, you must necessarily believe that He's all loving, all knowing, all powerful, all perfect. You must. If you're even questioning, you're defining God. You deny Him. Casey, it's still the problem you have, Casey, is in your world, evil doesn't exist. So for you to even question me, once again, about the problem of evil, you're presupposing God exists. But I'll, I'll address your question from my point of view. But from your point of view, evil doesn't exist. Right. But in my point of view, God created human beings in his image with free will. Now, if there's good in the world, there must, therefore, logically speaking, be the chance for evil in the world. Evil simply the absence of good. Now evil exists in the world because people who God has created in his image have chosen to reject his authority and rebel against him and live the way they want to live. Essentially, that mean you don't love God as the creator Essentially what they've done is they've chosen to be God of their own life and rule their own life. What, what, that's why what right, evidence do you are, have of God creating <laughs> you're creating us in his image? Well, the Bible speaks the Bible, about that. The Bible said that Galileo Galilee was born the victim of heresy. No, no, no the Bible doesn't say the Catholic Church did that. What the, the, Bible the Catholic comes, Church? The Bible's the a Bible representation says, of what the Catholic Church believes in. Isaiah chapter 40, that the earth is a sphere. So the Bible's always said the earth was not flat. If you will look strict, go to the Bible. The Bible says, the Bible says that the earth was the center of the, the universe. Says the earth that's where man's born. Where does it say that? The Bible says I don't know where it says that. Yet, oh, dude, it definitely where it says it. I got, if you're gonna make it. I have a book by Carl Sagan at my house to talk. Oh, Carl Sagan! <laughs> oh, Carl Sagan! Like he's an idiot, dude. Oh, uh, uh, he's just a great cosmologist, or anything. Oh man! I mean, if I really want to research you know something, you know, I'm done, dude. You're I'm not worth my time. I'm out of here, man. Another day. If I want to come back tomorrow, I'll be back here tomorrow. I'm gonna come back, Casey. Man, I got yeah, to yeah, go study up, Casey. Mm -hmm. But if you're an atheist, an agnostic, you have no right to believe in morality, right. in an objective sense. Hey, agnostic, no right believe in logic. Don't get the two mixed and, up. Atheists. I, I see what you're saying with atheism, as in you can't have the good and evil because they don't really. But agnostics can have good and evil. No, the foundation. Just because they don't have like. What's your name? Um, don't Lalo. give him your name. He's What's your name? Lalo. Lalo. Oh, it's okay. No, no, I've been, I've been very kind in the case. <laughs> no, Lalo, but, let me ask but, you a question, Lalo. No, I'm just... just what's, the, what's the foundation for objective right and wrong? Nothing, really. No, there has to be a foundation. If, if I'm going to say that's absolutely right and that's absolutely wrong, I am using a standard in the middle we to are. say right and wrong. Now, if I have a standard, <laughs> there must be a standard giver. And that standard giver no. must have an app. He must be absolute himself to give app. I mean, if you're going to give right and wrong, you began at some point in time, right? Well, who gave him if right? You, and if wrong. you began at some point in time, then before you, who decided what is right and wrong? So the person who decides what is right and wrong or declares it, he must have infinitely li lived in the past. We always have um, declared what is right and wrong in our own rights. Um, well, but so, in people so in general, so since the beginning of time. Is, is morality absolute or relative? Uh, I'd say relative. Are you absolutely sure about that? No, I'm not absolutely so sure about that. Anything. Be absolute <laughs> I can't be absolutely sure that's, about that. That's anything. my point. At Anytime least until you I say die, morality is relative, you're making an absolute declaration about morality and are therefore defeating your first premise that it's relative. So the fact of the matter is, morality is absolute, and just because certain people have different opinions about what is right and wrong doesn't make them right. The one who is right is in the beginning God, who declares what is right. And not only that, he does he declare what is right and wrong, he's revealed to each person here what is right and wrong by making them in his image, giving you a conscience, putting his law upon your heart, and telling you this is the way you should live. I'll get to you in a second. But unfortunately, every single person here, including myself, has disobeyed God's law. And because God is a just judge of the universe, He will judge you for your crimes against Him. He will judge you, but He does not. No, He doesn't want to cast you into hell. He doesn't want to give you what you deserve for your crimes. That's why He sent His Son Jesus Christ. He shed His blood on the cross. For you. He, uh, he laid His life down to the hands of lawless men who beat Him, who bruised Him, and by His His uh, His wounds we are healed. The Bible says. 
So we can be healed, we can be forgiven of our sins, cleansed of our sins, forgiven of our sins by the blood of Jesus Christ shed on the cross of Calvary. It goes like this. Either you get what you deserve for your sins, which is hell forever, God judging you get what you deserve, or you get what you don't deserve, you can forsake your sins, trust in Christ, and follow Him and obey Him the rest of your days, and God gives you what you don't deserve, which is mercy and grace and pardon and reconciliation to God the Father. The whole reason you were made to human beings to know God the Father, to know His Son, to have an intimate relationship with them, but sin has broken that relationship. Your own personal free will choice you've chosen to rebel against God has broken your relationship with God. Just because you disobey God, all God's going to heaven. Oh, it sure does. John, have you 14. ever have you ever disobeyed your parents? John, did you ever steal the cookie out of the cookie jar after they told you not to? Did they still love you? Did they still love you, did they still love you after that? And did you still love your parents? You made an assertion. Will you answer my question? I am answering your question. You asked a question. You made a statement. You answer with questions. You don't ever give a straight answer. You made a statement. I'm responding. I asked. Have you ever disobeyed your parents? I did, and then the moment I didn't love them. And the fact that they stop loving you, that they stop loving you, the fact that they stop loving you, that Jesus said in John 14, "If you love me, you will keep my commandments." So when you don't keep his commandments, you don't love him. So you can take this young man's word, take Jesus' word. First John chapter two says this. What's that? You take the Bible literally. I think a little where it's supposed to be taken a little, yes. There's certain Who's to say where it's supposed to be taken Let me just say this. Let me say this. When it comes to hold on a second, young man, you may, let me respond to what you said. I heard the oh on the crowd. Okay? There's something called hermeneutics. It's principles of interpretation when it comes to the Bible. And my first premise is that the Bible is the word of God, it's infallible, it's inerrant. I must have certain principles when interpreting it. Now, one of my principles for interpreting the Bible is that the literal sense makes perfect sense. Take no other sense lest you make nonsense. Let me give you an example of when it's not literal. Let me give you an example of when it's not literal. Jesus said it in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. If your hand caused you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It's better to go to hell or go to heaven with one hand than go to hell with both. Now, Jesus is endorsing mutilation there. He's simply saying, do all you can to get the sin out of your life. Your eye called you sin, pluck it out. I'm not endorsing plucking your eye out literally. I mean, if you have, if you're a man and you have a problem with the sin of lust, you're looking at woman with lust in your heart. You pluck out your eye, you're still gonna lust. You have one more eye. You pluck out both eyes, you're still gonna lust in your mind because you have these images in your mind when you saw before. You're not gonna solve the problem. So using biblical hermeneutics. The literal sense makes perfect sense. Take no other sense to make nonsense. Literal sense does not make sense to you. It's metaphoric. God is not, Jesus is not saying literally cut off your hand, fuck out your eyes. He's simply saying get the sin out of your life. Well, let's talk about Leviticus for a second. We're talking about the laws given to the nation of Israel. Now, in the Levitical law, or in Deuteronomy, they're very similar. You have many different laws given to the nation of Israel. You have governmental law for ruling the nation. You have dietary law. You have clothing laws. You have sacrificial, ceremonial laws. And then you also have moral law. Now, I would, I would assert this, that the only law within Leviticus and Deuteronomy that applies to all people of all time is the moral law. Everything else found in there is only for the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel was a theocracy, ruled directly by God, but they were his covenant people chosen directly by him. There's not been one theocracy since then. What about Iran? What's that? Well, yeah, but uh, that's not the same God. That's what I'm talking about. That's the Muslim God. Well, they may claim that, but my claim is that it's not. From my point of view, going to the Democratic government was a nation of Israel. So that's why God made it very clear all these different kinds of laws. What makes your point of view valid over anyone else? What's that? What makes your point of view valid or more? I'm speaking to the authority of God's word. Why is that an authority? Why is it an authority? Because yeah. we gave it that. The Bible? At some point. Exactly. Same well, as science. The Bible I, 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 humans wrote the Bible. 
Yeah. We well, did all of this. As we talked about before, <laughs> the, the sure strange. proof that the God of the Bible exists, that God is described in this Bible, is the impossibility of the contrary. If this God does not exist, you can't know if anything exists. Question, did God give you free will to tell other people they were wrong? He sure did. Premise for premise. Yeah, I'm preaching the word of God. And God is truth. And the Bible says, you shall know the truth and it will set you free. Yeah, so the laws in Leviticus, where that young lady went, and, oh, right there, okay, in Deuteronomy, none of those apply to us except for the moral law. God wrote the moral law upon your heart, upon my heart, so we know right from wrong. We know lying is wrong, stealing is wrong, adultery is wrong, fornication is wrong, drunkenness is wrong, and our bodies even scream at us that they're wrong. That's why when I used to be a drunkard, I, you know, I get a headache, my, I'd destroy my liver, I would throw up. Well, your body's trying to tell you that what you're doing is wrong. Excess in everything is wrong. You can get sick from too much water. That's why fornication, you, can, you have a chance to get an STD. It's wrong. Our pregnant and wet law. God is trying to speak to you not only through His Word, not only through your conscience, but through the nature He's given you. Tell you, listen, these things are wrong. Stop it. You're hurting, you're hurting, you're hurting yourself, harming yourself, and hurting others around so you. Children who are born with disabilities, <laughs> they didn't do anything wrong. They're wrong. They're, why did their body decide that? Why won't well, God heal them? God chose to be sick. What about parents who beat their children, cause psychological problems, and those children grow up and become rapists too? Did they make the choice well, for their parents? Are you going to gonna machine them? gun questions? You'll let me answer your questions. Please answer. Please okay, answer. Now, the first question asked is about people who are born with disabilities. Obviously, God chose for them to be that way. <laughs> That's, that's for God to tell us. What a nice guy. But that's but God has the authority to do that thing. God's the creator, we're the creation. When we go to this issue of uh, someone being raped, he know they're going to be. Oh, he sure does. So he knows what's going to happen before. No, no, the Bible says, no, he knows what's gonna listen, young man, the Bible says that God knits them together his mother's womb. So before they're born, when he's knitting together her mother's womb, making the who he wants them to be, so that's metaphoric as well. That's one part of my point. I know, I know. And, and it, as God wants that person to see. That's correct. So he knows he gets evil in the soul of the Lord. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't. Then why is that? Because men have free will. Well, wait a minute, young man. man. You ask a question, let me answer it. Evil comes with the free will. You can touch it, you can choose to obey People well, want a lot of times, they want an excuse for their sin. Well, so Adam and Eve, it's their fault. Oh, it's my parents' fault. It's the way I was born. It's, it's, a society, it's, it's society, it's their fault. No, it's your fault. And that's why God's going to hold you accountable for it. If it wasn't your fault, if it wasn't your fault, God would be unjust in holding you accountable for it. Why was I baptized? No, I'll give you this. Let me ask you a question first. Now, why was I baptized? Yeah. Well, that's your parents about that, but there's no reason to be baptized before coming to Christ in repentance and faith. Baptism is simply a sign of what's on the outside, what's happened on the inside. You get dipped in the water, you're buried with Christ, and you rise in the of life with Christ. Baptism does not wash away sin. The blood of Jesus washes away sin. And being baptized, there's no reason to baptize. You're just making a wet infant is all you're doing. You're giving it a bath. A child does not child does not have original sin. Hold on a second. Original sin is a false concept, not found in the Bible. Uh, you're accountable for your own personal sin. That's for Adam and Eve's sin. And Adam and Eve's sin, the only way it affected you is that now you're born to a sinful world instead of a holy world, and now you're going to physically die. I disobeyed my parents. I still love them. I've disobeyed God. In that moment of time, you did not love them. Question. Yeah. Oh, love is unconditional. You can't just stop. Sure is it. Sure is it. Sure is it. Well, he could have exercised power, but he chooses not to. Right. Okay. But, okay. So, is, is God well meaning? Just God just wants to be must give you free will. If you're a robot or a puppet in God's hands, then, then what's the point of it in the first place? It's like you're going to a woman here and pushing a button that'll make her marry you. 
That's not free will. That's not genuine love from her. And God's the same way. He wants you and everyone here to genuinely love him. So there must be the option to not love him, to do evil instead of doing good. That's the, in, in, in the Christian world, there's no problem of evil. Evil is simply the absence of good. But, now, but that doesn't mean that there's not consequences to using your free will wrongly. I mean, someone today could probably find a way to rape a woman and murder her. He has the ability, the free will, to, but if he gets caught, what's going to happen to him? He's sitting before a just judge. He's going to go to jail. So, so basically you're saying, so basically you're saying people need to do wrong in order to learn. No, no, no. God's will for you is to never do wrong. But the fact of the matter is all of us have done wrong. We've chosen to, though. Not because it was God's will for it to happen, because we willed it ourselves to happen. So God, God never wants you to sin, but the fact that you have sinned, I sinned in the past grievously against God. For the wicked sinner, I deserve the wrath and anger of God for my rejection of Him. I reject what my conscience was telling me, what he, that He gave me. I reject what nature said about God, that He's a creator and all-powerful. I reject His Word. And because I reject those things, I was... The only standard is your own, folks. Do unto others as they would do unto you. Why, why would you do that, atheist? What's the point of those things? Because I have empathy, something you clearly What's have. empathy? Have a good day. Empathy is a chemical reaction in your brain that's misfired. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't stop me from experiencing it. <laughs> hey, brother. Begging the question once again, young man. Hey, brother. That is not begging the question, you right. fucking idiot. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. you. So God bless you. God bless you. I just want to thank you. I think you come on a little aggressive to drive this crowd, but I encourage you. I think you're speaking the truth, so thank you for getting out there and doing it. Take a fucking class. Then go read some peer-reviewed literature and learn some science, you moron. So anyway, I have a question, okay? What standards are you using to call me a moron? Put your hand up again. He's using a standard to say, well, this guy's a moron. Up high so he can see it. And his standard is faulty. Once again, so he's begging the question. I, I think you were next. Uh, I just want to back back. I just want to clear something up. If I said that, for example, this isn't true, but if I said I was a deist, and I believe that God created the world and then left and he's about this alone, and your argument to say that's wrong would be, how can I trust my senses? No, no, I was talking to the atheist. Now, <laughs> now, but it's a different against some. I haven't addressed his argument yet. He's just asking it right now. So I'm just clarifying before when I was talking to the atheist, for you to trust your five senses, there must be a God who gave you your five senses and made them reliable. But I think the deist concept is wrong simply once again because the law of cause and effect simply says the cause must be greater than the effect. Now the God of deism is impersonal. He doesn't interact with his creation. So now if he's the cause, you yourself, the effect, must be impersonal to a greater degree. But the fact of the matter is you are not impersonal, and God, the cause, you're the effect, must be more personal than even you are. My blood That's sugar's crashing. Oh, yeah, I get some sugar. Effect. Sorry. So the God of being is defeated by, the, by what we know to be reality. You know there's personal beings around here, interacting with you. They know each other. You have friends, don't you? You have family that you love? And so you're interacting, you're personal with them, therefore the God of the universe, law of cause and effect, must be even more personal than even you are. So I, I think deism is defeated simply by the law of cause and effect. I got, I got one question. Huh? Um, uh, being a Christian you're myself, you're next. you know, there's one thing that's been left out of this whole mix, out of the whole argument, and that is the idea of faith. That is something that I believe, that you believe, and all of us have our own beliefs. But at the same time, that's something that's been proved in my life to me, but might not be proven to somebody else through this. So how might one of somebody in this group, I think the question pretty much everybody's asking is, why hasn't that been revealed to me? Now it's been revealed to my life being that, you know, I've survived cancer, I've done all this kind of stuff, stuff has been proven to me, there's been little miracles in my life, but I think what everybody else is trying to ask is, you know, why hasn't it been revealed to some of the people in this crowd? Why is it, why am I one of the lucky few that you know have figured this out in my life and I guess that was kind of the thing that I dealt with between the ages of 12 and 18 before I accepted Christ in my life. At What's your name by the way? I'm Walt. Walt? Yes. Walt, now, now I want to say this Walt, that it, see, you seem to be setting up here, you said lucky, you're the lucky one. As if God doesn't want other people who aren't lucky ones to be I, saved. That's not what I mean by lucky. I, I mean, probably why not what you has mean, it been that I have realized this and somebody else has not realized this? Okay, yet? well I would say this, this is what the Bible declares. The reason people don't come to God is not because they lack enough evidence. It's because they're suppressing the evidence they do have. 
Okay, so God has given, I mean, I, we've gone through this several times today, logic. Every time you use logic, you're presupposing in the beginning God. Every time you say, that's wrong, the Crusades are wrong. You know, that, that guy, Ted Haggard in Colorado, who was, who was speaking against homosexuality and he did it himself, that was hypocrisy, that's wrong. Every time you declare right and wrong, you're presupposing in the beginning God, the Christian God. Every time you act in a personal way to someone, you're presupposing in the beginning the Christian God. So I think it's becoming so obvious you have to really put blinders on your eyes and deafen your ears to not even see that God exists. And that's why the Bible says in Romans 1 that everyone is without excuse. See, the problem isn't whether God's giving enough evidence. The problem is, are you willing to accept or reject the evidence God has given you? And the Bible says, if you seek the Lord with all your heart, He will be found by you. So the problem is not on God's part. God's not trying to reach out to me. God's not revealing himself to me. God's hiding from me, as I hear some atheists say. No, 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 no. God's made it so clear, it's not even funny. We need to stop and realize it. And realize, not only that, we have a concept of justice within us, and right and wrong within us, that we've done wrong, and that we deserve justice for our wrongdoing. But God offers mercy. I'll give you a second. God offers you mercy and grace and pardon if you'll but come to him with a broken and contrite heart, realizing you sin grievously against him, realizing you deserve judgment and hell for your sins, and pleading and fleeing your, fleeing yourself upon the mercy of God. Like the parable of the rich, of the, of the, the last, not, not the rich man last, but the, the, the tax collector and the Pharisee. The Pharisee came before God and said, God, I thank you that I'm not like this tax collector. And tax collector said, forgive me a sinner. And that's what every sinner must do. They must come to God with humility in their heart, brokenness in their heart, knowing that they've sinned wickedly against God, and flinging themselves upon the mercy of God, and committing in their heart, they don't want to live this way any longer. Right. They want to live for God for now on. They repent of their sins. They forsake their sin. And they trust in Christ and follow Him. So, so not a matter of, uh, it's not a matter of whether they're having an, uh, uh, a lack of evidence. It's a matter of not trusting the evidence God's already given you. And if you search... Uh, after God, and you trust evidence he's already given you, he'll give you more evidence. No doubt in my mind about that.